Welcome back to Anything is Possible. I told you these are great stories. And today, Randy Boyd is my guest. When we uh, took the break, you were talking about you're out there, you're selling, and you come across some customers and they say, we want invisible fencing, and you call the invis invisible fence company, and you are being passed around. That's right. All right. So I finally get to the assistant to vice president of sales, and I describe to her my business. At that time, I had about eight other salesmen working for me, calling on about uh, 2,000 farm stores around the country. So I wanted to sound really big. I would, I would share that. Fact is, we're only doing about a million and a half dollars in sales a year. But uh, anyway, so I gave her my big company uh, pitch, and she said, well, you know, this is really interesting, your concept of buying from us. Why don't you write us a letter describing how you'd like to buy from us, and maybe six months, maybe a year, we might call you back. I remember hanging up the phone and thinking, here I am, you know, struggling to make $100 sales in my, my Dodge Maxi van in uh, South Georgia, and here this person won't even uh, sell me a, a, a their product. So it was motivating enough to uh, make me do a little research and I found out a few things. One, they had a patent but it was getting ready to expire. Uh, second, um, that they only sold through franchise dealerships, which was part of the reason why they wouldn't sell to me. So I went to the local dealer and bought one of their systems. Uninstalled, they charged $850 for it. And there's, if you're familiar with the, the, the invisible fences, there's two parts. There's a, a device that the dog wears and a transmitter. I wasn't o able to open up the uh, receiver, but I was able to open up the uh, transmitter. And I remember looking at it and thinking, there's just not that many parts in there. And after selling electric fencing all those years, I kind of had some idea what parts are worth. So I uh, took the uh, product over to a friend that had a parts business and ask him to dissect it for me. And that particular part of the unit they charged $450 for. He called back two weeks later and said, in that $450 device, there's $13 worth of parts. Wow. I want to qualify this because I know this is on public record right. that right. today we put a lot more value in our transmitter. Right. So those, those, those uh, costs are, aren't relevant to what you get today. Right. Put a lot more value today. But the... Um, I saw there was an opportunity. Somewhere between $13 and $450, I could offer something of value and and uh, make some money. And so that was the the, uh, the beginnings. Um, I think at that time, my balance sheet said I was worth $26,000. I don't know where the cash was, but that's what it said on my balance sheet. Um, I had a, a two-year-old at home. My wife was working as a court reporter. I remember it was one of those faithful decisions. You know, So is this uh, such a big idea that we will invest everything that we've ever saved? Uh, and obviously, we decided to do so. We believed in the idea. Uh, a year and a half later, we had the first product. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, the goal was just to sell 100 units a month. We were selling them for $250. So I thought, you know, an extra $25,000 a month in sales would be pretty good. And again, that first month, we sold 3,000 units. And uh, wow. it turned out, obviously, to be a much bigger idea even than I, I had hoped for. What does that do to you when that happens? When, when you have that kind of a run-up of success? Because I know you're a person of a great faith as well. I know you spend a lot of time in the community. You're on a lot of boards. You're always trying to give back. Um, does that flush of success make you go, whoa, do I deserve to have it go this fast, this good, this well, this? You know, I don't know that I've ever wondered about whether I personally deserved it or not. I guess I look at from my from a as a as a company, my associates I think deserve the success that they've had, and there's so many of us that are involved that uh, um, I, I don't doubt that what success that they've created for this organization they deserve because they've they've committed so so much to it. Um, I'll share with you something that I, I shared with my associates uh, just uh, I guess a few months ago. Um, I asked them a question, and it's a good one to, for you to think about as well, but I asked them, so uh, what is your Groundhog Day? What would your Groundhog Day look like? And I'm kind of using the, uh, the movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, you know, in which he has to live the same day over and over again for the rest of his life. And uh, my answer to them uh, was that my Groundhog Day would start off with my family and end with my family, but that big chunk in the middle would be coming to work with that group of people because, you know, we all share the same mission, and that mission is something that we, is, uh, is challenging. We want to be the most trusted brand, and we define that as being a billion-dollar company. So we've got a huge goal ahead of us. So we're all, we come to work energized and inspired, not thinking incrementally, but more revolutionary. And we share the same values. We like each other. We have this great environment in which there are dogs running around everywhere. Uh, so it's, a, it's hard to have a bad day with, with, with this kind of environment. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we make over a million products a year in which we're actually changing people's lives and, and the lives of their pets. And then as a result of all that, um, we get some rewards, which we're able to give back to our community, which is also very important for us. So anyway, my Groundhog Day is uh, being with this group of people. And I guess the challenge is to find a place in the world where you're satisfied to go back 
and do that? That's a great question. When you're talking to young, young entrepreneurs and you're telling them, here's how you, here's how you put it together to be successful. Cause I know your dad's gotta be proud of you to see you to build something like this. Um, what do you tell them? Well, you know, we've got our values on the wall and I give them, and it's also on the back of my business card. I would hand them my business card and suggest, you know, consider these values as a, uh, as a, uh, uh, something to maybe what borrow those? from. So there's, there's seven. So I, I do them fairly quickly. Try a lot of stuff and keep what works. Honesty, um, create the environment of uh, uh, openness, teamwork, and equality, uh, create win-win-win situations, uh, continuous improvement, and then build an organization that's built to last. And we do all those things. It kind of helps center us. Um, I had a professor once suggest that um, when you're trying to run an organization, rather than telling people, if you want to create ultimate freedom, um, rather than telling people what to do, you should just tell them, um, what uh, not to do, and then give them the ability to to uh, be to innovate past that. And our our list is just stay within those values, and as long as you do those things, everything else is you're free to innovate. Why do you spend so much time in the community? Well, I, I mentioned uh, I think earlier that you know, I, I grew up as a Boy Scout, and as a Boy Scout, um, there's everybody knows the um, I know you just won the Distinguished uh, Citizen Award. And I was in the audience, um, but I think uh, the Boy Scouts is a real important part of my life, and I'm a Boy Scout master today, and uh, trying to give back and to the to the same organization that gave to me. But one of, one of the things that Boy Scouts teaches we teach we talk about the Scout Oath and the Scout Laws, but uh, there's a third one that the boys have to memorize that's always been important, and that to me, and that was um, the code of the outdoors and there's a long uh, phrase but the, the short version of the code of the outdoors is leave places better than you found them wow. and you know I think that applies not just to campsites but to uh, the world that is so awesome final question is yes, about the callus on your hand because I've seen a lot of mm. you got calluses I've seen I've met a lot of CEOs you're the first one to sit at this table with calluses where'd you earn those you know I wish I could say that I was out chopping trees or doing something uh, great, but I think it's probably from lifting weights. Oh, okay. So, not, not, that's what, that's yeah. what I, and he's a stud too. That's what I love. That. Randy Boyd, hey. thanks so much for Thank coming by. Thank you for by. having me. Appreciate it. I told you, anything is possible. We'll see you next time.